Hey guys, Will Robinson here. I'm going to take a short break on that 5.7 head job. Customer came in with a 2005 Hyundai Elantra and needs brakes all the way around. I'm going to give you a quick view of the rear brakes and just do a quick shot of it. Sorry it's outside, but both bays are tied up. So here it is. Let's do it to it. Hey guys. So if you're getting ready for inspection or something, you're wondering how the auto tech's going to measure your brake pads. Well, this is how they do it. A lot of them do it in 30 seconds. So you want to get yourself a ruler that reads in 30 seconds. Push it up against the rotor. Measure your distance between the back plate and the rotor. Now they also yeah. measured us in millimeters. Because we're down to the indicator already. But Service limit on these pads are that. two millimeter, which is about one sixteenth, approximately three thirty seconds of an inch. I'm trying not to turn on any work. This guy came in and needed brakes, and uh, I got both of my bays tied up. So I take it how I can get it. Break the other, break them both loose before you take them out, because otherwise the caliper is going to flex on you. We'll just free float on there. They really warmed up today. Thing you're going to want to do. So you want to break this loose. It's a mercy brake rack. Hope you guys got a good shot from there. I'm moving in a little closer. So far all I needed was a 14 millimeter. Mercy brake cable right on my way. Okay. Need to finish removing these. Okay. Maybe caliper. And as you can see on these. These pistons have notches in them. That's to get a special tool in there and turn it in. Because there's a cam that your uh, mercy brake. That's how your mercy brake works. So, I'll get the tool to turn that in. Yeah, I think it was due. Hey guys, a good way to tell also is if your brakes are thinner than your back plate, it's a good time to replace them. Sometimes when they get down to the indicator, it scores the rotor. The bungee cord or something to tie that caliper up. I hear he was well beyond his uh, recommended specs. That's just way too low. You see it. Start cutting into the rotor, so we'll replace we'll replace them both. You said put it on 30 seconds, measure from that back plate to the edge of your pad. Yeah, it's just not even 130 seconds. Looks like I'm going to be able to do this whole job with a 14. These are bolts for the back caliper bracket. For those of you about safety, it's not just on the jack. There's a there's a jack stand under right behind it. I just leave the jack underneath it for extra precaution. Make 
so I gotta get that. This is how I have most of my luck, and that's what an impact screwdriver. This one's seen its days, but let me tell you, a lot of people use the hammer method, tap it and then break it loose, but pretty much this is my fail-safe way. And uh, you're pretty much doing the same thing, but you're actually putting the you know the Phillips head bit into the into the head before you smash it down. Sometimes after you do that, you're not able to get it. You're already messing up the head. So let's see if it goes. And a couple hits and it was loose. That's it. Now these rotors have two jack and holes. Well, pretty much just one jack and hole. That one's going to lead you right back in. These rotors have one jack and hole right here. A lot of times they're so rusted out you can't get into them. So uh, I got new rotors so I'm not too worried about these ones. I'm going to try tapping them in between the studs. That's all it takes. If you don't have good aim, you can start a couple lug nuts on it prior to hitting it. But uh, you want to also make sure all this rust is cleaned out. And anything left over back there is going to throw your rotor out of balance and give you a bad pulsation. Let's see if we can turn this caliper in. This kit comes with its own jacking mechanism and back plate, but usually you don't really need that. Let's see if I can turn it in without that. Uh, I'm going to throw that. Be enough. As you see, that's all it takes. It just turns in. Like I said, there's a mechanism back there for this emergency brake that actually cams out as you go. Sorry about the bad lighting, guys. But like I said, I got my base full and I don't like turning on work. So, I do what you got to do to stay going. I always make it a practice to clean this up a little bit. As you can see, there's a lot of rust and stuff back in there. I just get a little wire brush. Just do it to it. I don't like complaints. I like when people come back, but not for jobs they already did. So. This will keep them coming back for the right reason. It's good enough, and I'm. Picking. After you wire brush this down, spray it down with some brake cleaner too. I already, I did okay, afterwards. Get a new rotor, your resurfaced rotor. Remember, if it's new, it comes with the anti rust stuff on it, so you want to clean that off. I just don't know why I cut it out of the I video. Spray it down with brake cleaner prior. You want to line up your hole, your screw hole. Also, don't hurt to spray some uh, lubricant on that spindle, just to keep it from rust. Or screw. If you have a little never sees, it's a good idea to put it on there, but I'll just put a little brake lube on it. Better than nothing. Okay, you don't have to kill it. Don't have to back bracket. Check your clips, make sure they're not cracked or broke. These are like shims, they take up space. And make your pad fit tighter into the caliper bracket so they don't rattle around. But sometimes with rattle and stuff, they'll, they'll crack over time. And you could just buy a hardware kit for it, but 
This one's in good shape. Okay, check your caliper pins. Make sure they they move freely. Right now is a good time to uh, open them up. And you can see there's plenty of grease in there. I think I'm actually the one that did the last brake job on this. So there's there's still plenty of stuff left in there. It's good for a long time. There's a, a thrift shop that's right across the street from us. Right across the street from me where I'm working outside. And I can just imagine. They're probably like, what the heck? That nut's talking to himself. But what I do for you guys, I'm actually taking a break. This is a break for me. <laughs> and that uh, head job. Doing brakes is a break. Breaking caliper grease, put it wherever there's metal metal contact. I'll put a little here. You don't need very much. Let's put a little on the pad. Make sure it's there. You said I can come back for the right reasons, not because you're squeaking and squawking. You can tell where there's going to be metal metal contact. There's usually some kind of boss or something that sticks out. Okay, it's a nice tight fit. It's nice. Put your inner pad on it. It's usually one with the squeaker squawker indicator. And uh, as you can see, that it's probably set to like 330 seconds. Usually that's a, about when you get your brakes changed. Anything beyond that won't pass inspection anyhow. So, uh, as I notice, you usually put them upwards. That way, when it comes around, it, usually you're going forward, so we'll push this down. Otherwise, we'll bend it back out of the way. And you'll be like, hmm, that noise went away. I don't know what that was for. But, must be good now. Okay, put that into your bracket. Remember, wherever there's going to be metal to metal. Okay. All right. Remember, before you slide this caliper on, you gotta line one. Of, you gotta square one of them notches up with the back pin on the back pad. So uh, when you slide that caliper in, that's what you see me doing now. I'm squaring it up. So when you slide that caliper in, it uh, slides right in the one of those notches. Slide right, right into the pin. Eat the food. Tighten up the Get your handy dandy bungee cord. Mercy break. Okay, get everything tight. You see, I did the whole job with a 14 millimeter. Okay, I'm just gonna go pump. Up, get this caliper out, make sure everything's good. Okay, guys, that's it. Put the tire back on, and we'll go to the other side. Hey guys, Torquey Wheels. 
You might have a set of sockets like that for using on an impact gun. That works fine. In this case, torque wrench. So, torque your wheels. Stay tuned. I'm out. Till next time. Let's get back to work on that head job.